finally found a topic to do a video essay on. After all this time, I'm going back to my roots. Anyway, I can't find a YouTube about these things, but I find them pretty interesting, so I want to talk about them. Air rods are studied in cryptozoology and ufology, and are small, thin, cylindrical oddities seen only by cameras. I found out about them in an iceberg video, link in the description, but there was almost no information about them. They seemed interesting, but all I could find was a fandom page about cryptids, a paranormal amino, and a Wikipedia page. According to the video, air rods may belong to so-called atmospheric beasts, whatever that means. This kind of stuff, with super limited info, intriguing premises, and a mysterious air to them, is what I thrive on. Let's do a deep dive on air rods. Air rods, also known as skyfish, solar entities, or simply rods, are elongated visual artifacts in photographic images and video recordings, according to Wikipedia. The cryptid wiki has its own possible explanations, though. They say they might be living creatures, but also admit that those beliefs are typically only held by more outlandish theorists. The most likely explanation of these rods are after images of insects in interlaced film, with their high speeds obscuring their true form, leaving them in a world of pure motion blur. China Central TV even aired a two-part documentary about these artifacts. They set up cameras and witnessed identical phenomena. When that didn't give satisfactory results, they set up nets around the camera and caught moths and other insects with every sighting of a rod. But why do these after images show? Well, to explain that, I'll have to get into the basics of how cameras work. The most basic camera you can possibly get is a box with a hole at one end and a photosensitive film on the other. The light comes through the hole, and, because it's so small, each point that can be seen through the hole will let a certain amount of photons through, and the amount of photons hitting the film will change the crystals on the film a certain amount and leave an image. The amount of crystals determines the resolution, the exposure will determine how much light is let in, and the size of the hole, also known as the aperture, and the lens determine how focused the light is, and therefore how sharp the image is. Modern cameras handle all this digitally, and there's more to it when it comes to color, but that's all you need to know right now to understand air rods. Videos are a little more complicated, but they have the same principle. Only multiple images are taken each second, and then strung together to make the illusion of motion. Higher exposure also allows more light to get in, making it necessary for filming at night or in other low light conditions. But it does add a significant amount of motion blur. That's part of what causes the air rods to look the way they do, as security cameras and most cameras that seem to have taken images of air rods have high exposure times. What about interlacing? Interlacing is relatively simple. First though, we need to understand how videos are played back on screens. In a CRT, the big old TVs that make the high-pitched buzzing noises, a cathode ray is sent at each part of the pixel from left to right, top to bottom, along the whole screen. Each ray specifically charges specific colors in each pixel, which are known as subpixels, but that's a little beyond the scope of this video. Captain Disillusion has a great video on interlacing if you want to know more. I'm just trying to lay down the basics. Link to his video in the description. Interlacing occurs when every other line is drawn in succession, and the CRT jumps back up to the other lines, essentially doubling the frame rate but having the vertical resolution. This causes artifacts, like those seen in the air rod images. So, somewhat anticlimactically, air rods are just bugs flying past slow cameras. But what if there is more? What if that's not all there is to it? Well, there isn't. As much as I'd love to delve into a ton of conspiracy theories and debunk them one by one, I'm afraid it really comes down to there being an insect in front of the camera. Orbs, another optical phenomena that appears on cameras, are caused similarly. The main difference with orbs is that they can't be fixed quite as easily as using a lower exposure time. Orbs are caused by the camera's flash reflecting off dust and other airborne particles, such as pollen or raindrops. Orbs are called backscatter by photographers. It happens pretty commonly underwater as well, giving underwater photography a rather eerie quality to it. The particles are much nearer to the camera than the subject of the photo being taken, leading to them being out of focus, and the light being much brighter than that coming off of the subject to the inverse square law. The inverse square law, for those of you who don't know, states that the farther away a subject is, the less light will reach the viewer. So basically, if something is farther away, it appears dimmer. So there you have it. Two optical phenomena that are usually described as paranormal phenomena instead of optical phenomena explained away. Uh, 
I saw that iceberg video and I decided to make this video about the sky rods because there was basically no information and it seemed interesting. It was kind of anticlimactic to learn that they were just insects in front of the camera. I was kind of hoping they'd be like electromagnetic, ele I can't talk, electromagnetic disruption or something like that, but you know, uh, not everything is super cool in real life. Though I do think that cameras themselves are really interesting and I do think that uh, using this as a way to talk about how cameras work was a pretty good use of it. So I still think that this video turned out pretty interestingly. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. I love you all. Um, and I'm just going to let wait play out. A good song by C418. Minecraft soundtrack, actually. I don't know how to end this.